Raptor Rex is a new dinosaur, brand new dinosaur from northern China, from the famous feathered dinosaur beds. It's 125 million years old. It's a new tyrannosauroid, and it really provides key information for how these biggest and perhaps uh, among the best predators evolved. A lot of specimens today around the world are found by amateurs, by locals. Some are out to collect fossils, others just bump into them onto their, on their farms or on their ranches. This specimen was found by someone in northern China, and it was taken out of the country and sold on the open market. I was then approached by the man who bought it. I, I said, we have to donate this back to science if you want me to describe it. We made an agreement, and that is what has happened. And so the specimen is going to be returned to China eventually into a collection in Inner Mongolia near the site of where it was dug up. So we're very familiar with Tyrannosaurus rex, the apogee, the, the apex of Tyrannosaur evolution. But how do we get there? How do we get to these huge animals? What did they look like when they were smaller and didn't have some of the features that they have now? Well, Raptor rex really is a pivotal moment in the history of the group where most of the biologically meaning, meaningful features about, about Tyrannosaurs came into being. And the surprising fact is that they came into being in such a small animal. This animal, Raptor rex, is only, as an adult, about eight feet long. It would stand right at about my chin height on the back, weigh about as much as I weigh, 175 pounds maybe, but it had everything that a Tyrannosaur had in terms of its biology. So when we look inside the skull and actually cast the brain of the animal, this is the forebrain, and here we find the swollen olfactory bulbs. That's the sense of smell coordinated in this part of the brain. We've known in Tyrannosaurus rex, it has an enhanced sense of smell from those olfactory bulbs, and Raptor X likewise, much earlier in time, has all these Tyrannosaur features. One of the most perplexing things about Raptor X and Tyrannosaurs in general is the puny forelimb. Why would it have a forelimb, get rid of even the third finger, it's got two fingers, and such a small forelimb relative to the rest of the killing machine? But these forelimbs are not vestigial or useless to the animal. They're actually well formed, and they would have actually engaged prey when they did bring them down. Compared to, the to Tyrannosaurus rex, here's the forelimb of Sue. You know, this is a powerful forelimb. We think it actually could grab with a force of 500 or 600 pounds. It's actually not a trivial item. But still, it's secondary. The forelimb in Tyrannosaurus is secondary as a killing part of the animal. So this really, in essence, turns on its head our ideas about tyrannosaurs. We thought that many of those features appeared as the animal was becoming huge or soon after the animal became huge. It lost its strong forelimbs and so on and so forth. Not so. These all came together 125 million years ago, some 60 or 70 million years before Tyrannosaurus rex, in an animal that weighed no more than me or you.